Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. Um, do subscribe or actually support 58 Keys on Patreon. Well, because there is so much to talk about, it's just, you see me hesitating here, in this case, in this case, tell you what, no messing, no building up drama, let's just get straight to the one key point, which is this. This is a finder window on the Mac, and this is the sidebar. Uh, it's, it's a shortcut, isn't it, to different folders, different hard drives, different servers even, and yours will look different to mine, but there is one thing that we both definitely have, recents. Click on that and you will see a list of all your recent documents. So uh, if you save something and you can't find it anywhere, there you go, it's right there in recents. This came up in a 58 Keys live writing sprint last Sunday. It's a writing sprint for Patreon members. And it's something even long time Mac users tend to miss. I mean, I don't remember when I first noticed it. I, I can't conceive of when Apple must have slipped it in, introduced it. But I do know that it has saved me a fair few times. Now, that's it, but there's a lot more to say about recents in general, and even a little bit more to say about this particular recent section in the Finder window. Plus, there are two warnings to get... Oh, come on, let me have some build-up to drama. Um, the two warnings about recents, they're small, but they are kind of important. You need to know them. The first is that once or twice, I've gone to look in recents for something and not found what I'm looking for. And I don't know why. If you do know why, I'd be really grateful for your telling me in the comments below. And the other thing is, it's kind of similar. You may look and not find, but it's because as you look at your Mac's Finder windows, you might not see recents at all. You won't see the heading for it. It is there, but it could be hidden. In case it is, look for the word favourites, probably at the very top of that sidebar, and click on the disclosure triangle uh, over to its right there. And there you go. There's a long list. You might actually have half a million tons of other things in favourites, but somewhere in there you will have recents. And following two warnings, let me go the other way. Let me give you a nice thing, right? If you've checked recents because you can't find a document that you've just saved. Well, this does give you the document back. You can just, um, you know, double click on it to open it back up and carry on working on it. But you still kind of don't actually know where it's been saved on your Mac. But the Mac can, the Mac does know. By default, uh, you need to go to the view menu and choose show path bar. If you do that, the bottom line of the window changes it shows the path the this folder begat that folder begat that folder and all this stuff so on and so on down through the mac folders down to your document um i had this set anyway if you do already if that path bar is already showing then there isn't a show path bar option there's only a hide path bar option it's purely personal preference whether you have it showing or hiding but i like how when it's visible you, can, you don't just see the root of things, you can click on any part of it. So the document itself, yeah, but also the folder above it, the folder above that. Even if it's a long list and you're going to have to squidge about, you're clicking. Whatever there is in the path, you can click on that and that bit will open. So, for example, you can open the folder that this mystery document is in and see what else you've lost there. All that from the Max Finder window. But there is more in the hunt for recent documents. Uh, just staying in the Max Finder for a tiny bit. Uh, come away from recents, go anywhere else, okay? Uh, this is my 58 keys folder with individual folders in it for all of the episodes as I work on them. Now, by default, uh, by which I mean, if you haven't been fiddling, then what you see, the documents are probably shown as icons and they are definitely arranged in alphabetical order by name. If you move icons around, they stay where they are, but broadly it's by name. If you click here and choose as list though, you not only get the documents listed without those whacking big icons, you get them listed with all sorts of other information. I mean, seriously, all sorts. You see things there, you can keep adding them 
to it. And actually, you do add to it. I'm afraid it's so long since I added to it and changed the setting and muck things around. I can't remember what it's supposed to look like when you buy a Mac and get it straight out of the box. So how about this? Let's let's assume that you don't have what I want to show you, what I need to show you. Here's how to get it. Right click in the bar next to where it says name and you'll get a pop up list of things that you can have shown in this window. Make sure date modified is ticked. And now one of the columns in this window will be called date modified. Click on those words, date modified, and then the whole list, everything in the uh, that window, the whole list of documents, it's switched from alphabetical to chronological. Um, I should say, there you, you saw this, there's also a date created if you want that, but date modified is better because it arranged thing, arranged your documents by when you last did anything with them, when you last opened them, instead of just, you know, whenever it was you first made them. And um, also while we're here, if you don't happen to know this, Already, if you don't happen to have fiddled around with this as much as I obviously have, notice please that um, the selected column, in this case, date modified, it, well, it's slightly in bold so you can see what is the selected one, but also has a little tiny down arrow next to it. Click on that down arrow and the down arrow becomes an up arrow and the contents of the folder are rearranged in reverse order of date modified. One more. One more thing about the Finder and Recents. Click on the Apple menu. So we've been in the Windows, we're now up to the Apple menu and you will see right there a Recent Items list. It shows you the last 10 documents you opened from any app and it might be particularly useful because it also shows you the last 10 applications you used. Also servers, actually you see that list at the bottom there, servers, though as you see I've obviously not connected to any servers lately. I feel I'm missing out. Um, also notice that there is a clear menu option. If you ever want to, for some reason, you can choose that and this whole this whole menu blanks out, resets, until the next app you open or the next document you open or save. Um, and this clearing, by the way, clearing the menu, it only clears this menu. It doesn't change the Recents folder on your Mac. Speaking of which, okay, this is the Mac but it's actually, it's all pretty much the same on the iPad and the iPhone. Different, same idea, different ways of doing it. On those, to see any recent documents made in any app, you need to open the Files app. And then at the foot of the Files app screen, there's a Recents button. One thing about that though, recent documents is, well, it's, it, is, it isn't really kind of a per device thing. Uh, your iPhone is going to be able to show you the recent documents you opened on your Mac and vice versa, if you use iCloud Drive. If you don't, then it's all per device. Uh, but since you probably do use iCloud Drive, it's a default. When you're away from your Mac, you can open up your iPhone and from that, open up the documents you're working on most recently. It's really smooth. I like this. And speaking of iCloud though, you could also just go to iCloud.com on your Mac. Actually on your Mac now, it used to be you couldn't go on the iPhone, it would just try to route you to the individual apps, but you can now. Uh, Macs, iPads, iPhones and even PCs. You log in with your Apple ID and right there on the front page there is an iCloud Drive section and by default it's showing all of your recent documents. You can click on the heading Drive, where it says Drive there, to go to a fuller listing with even more entries of recents. Or actually, if, you don't, if you're fed up of recents, you can click on the ellipses at the bottom left of that window and set whether or not it shows you any recents enough with the recents. Well, not quite enough. Just three more things to show you. Starting with what every Mac app offers and then ending up with a separate Mac app that you can buy that gives you more. First, Take a look at apps in your doc. Um, there have to be certain types of apps. Apps where you create documents. So Pages, Word, QuickTime Player, but not Apple Music, Apple News, something like that. With an app like that where you create things, right click on the app in the doc and you get, there it is, the usual things like options and show all windows, but you also get a list there of recent documents. This is the 10 most recent files you opened or saved within that app and actually as a kind of bonus you see there's more than 10 listed there there's actually a list of all currently open windows as well open documents in windows uh, those are the documents at the bottom with the different icon next to them 
Next, just as one example here, take Pages on the Mac and on the iPhone. On the Mac, open Pages and then choose the File menu and there's an option right there called Open Recent. Just like the recent items list in the Finder, it shows you the last 10 documents you worked on. And it also contains a clear menu option too. Somebody at Apple must be really keen on hiding their recent histories. But okay, say you ignore that, right? And you're in pages and you just do the regular open thing. Well, with the open dialog box in front of you, well, you can still choose recents from the sidebar exactly the same way as you did in the Finder window. And of course, this will show you many more than 10 recent documents. Um, it also showed, I really like this, it shows them to you in, in sections, handy sections. So today's recent documents, the previous seven days, the previous 30 days. And I suppose if you've been using the app long enough, then it'll start grouping older things, uh, starting off with months. It'll group them into January, February, or whatever. Again, that's on the Mac. Over on the iPhone or the iPad, opening pages, well, it will open to a document if you were working on one before, but even then you can tap on that left facing arrow to leave that document and go to a view of all of your files. At the bottom of that view, there will be the same recents button that you saw in the files menu. So this is specifically in an app and that's in every iPhone and iPad app that creates any documents at all. Just as the recent items list is in every Mac app, so this is in every iPhone app. And that would be it, except I don't think it's possible to talk about searching for documents on a Mac without also mentioning default folder X. Buy this Mac app, right? And then every time you're in an app and you choose open or save, it wraps itself around the regular dialog box like this. And one thing in that is recent files. There's also recent folders, very useful. Click on recent files though, and it shows you the most recent 15 documents you opened in this app. 15 is more than 10. Look at the quality of information you get here. So default folder X, uh, it is better than an app's own open recent menu. It's better than, it offers more than those do but it's not as many as if you did that thing of just choosing file open and then clicking on recents in the sidebar. Only thing is with default folder X, if you scroll through the 15 that it shows, well, as you land on each one, you get this tiny pop-up window, that, a pop-up preview really, which is very small, but it's often enough to show you whether it's the document you wanted to open. Plus, <laughs> There's always just, there's been enough else in default folder X that I've actually, I've actually regarded it as an essential Mac app for at least a decade. Now, at least a decade. And now those extra features include quick search. From default folder X's icon in the menu bar, you can choose the same recent files or you can choose quick search. Click on that and you get a very, it's, it looks like Spotlight, doesn't it? It's a Spotlight-like search bar, and it works the same way as Spotlight or Alfred or Raycast or any that offer this search feature in that you can type what you're looking for and it will find it. If that were all it did, I probably wouldn't use it. I probably wouldn't remember that it was there because I automatically now reach for Alfred 5 for this and countless other things. But if I didn't have Alfred, I certainly would. And one thing Default Folder X's quick search does that Alfred 5 doesn't, that Raycast doesn't, that Spotlight doesn't, is to save you having to search at all, just by opening the quick search, you get a list of recent documents. So you can just see it there, click on the one you want. Off, away off you go. Who knew there could be so many ways to make sure we don't mislay a document. I bet we can find a way to do it. You know, we put our minds to it, we'll pull it off. Anyway. Um, that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now take care of yourself, eh? Write more. Write some more documents to go into the recent documents things, okay? And I'll see you soon.